Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. As you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my friend Joel's home theater. Guys, this is gonna be a fun one. We've got three dedicated spaces that Joel's gonna be taking us through. A home theater here. He's got stuff in his living room, his kitchen area, and even a bedroom. It's gonna be awesome. Now, before we get into the video and share all the aspects of it, I wanna give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Elite Screens. Elite Screen carries a huge selection of ultra short throw solutions in fixed and electrics in addition to award-winning products and a new golf impact line. Have an ultra short throw projector? Pick up their new electronic floor rising CLR screen or go with an electric retractable drop down CLR screen. Want to have your speakers out of sight? Take a look at their new acoustically transparent ambient light rejecting Aon Cinegray 4D AT Edge Free Fixed Frame or their acoustically transparent Aon Cinewhite A8K screen. For all your projection screen needs, visit EliteScreens.com. I'll have links down in the description below. So Joel, thanks so much for inviting me into your home, dude. No, I'm glad to have you here. It's awesome. Thanks this, for driving. <laughs> yes, yeah, about a two and a half hour drive. But this is phenomenal, man. You've got an thanks. incredible space that you and your whole family enjoy. We've got a dedicated movie room here in a living room environment. Yep. And I think a lot of people are going to relate to that because not everybody has the opportunity to have a dedicated theater room. No, we had to compromise on some things for sure yeah. um, and try to make the space work. And I think we've I think we've done the best we could, that's for sure. Absolutely, and so we're gonna talk a lot about that. We're gonna give you all the story behind it. But first thing what I wanna do is some of my audience have asked, can we get like an overview of what we're gonna be looking at in the video? So I'm gonna jump behind the camera. If you'll just give us a quick tour of this room, we'll follow you into the next room and then we'll show the third room. Then we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna talk about each individual kind of section because there's a lot of story in this and I'm excited to ask a whole lot of questions. So I'm really excited about this one. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everybody, so my name is Joel. Um, again, I, I wanna thank Mike to coming over here and checking out the theater and we're gonna give like a little general overview. This is our main living room, our theater. And as you can see, it's not just like a lot of the dedicated ones that we see where people have like, you know, soundproofing and everything. A lot of these things are interesting and important to us. So we ended up doing all different kinds of, uh, of either artifacts or, you know, replicas and things like this. So, you know, obviously you have like the Ecto-1 from, uh, from the Ghostbusters. You have all of the swords here from Lord of the Rings. Star Wars, I'm old enough, I'm 52 years old yesterday, so uh, Star Wars was a big deal to us, so the lightsabers, Luke's, uh, the hero lightsaber, Darth Vader helmet. Um, this is my elite screen, we'll go over all the little details later on like that, um, but uh, I've had that basically, I think like in like eight years now, something like that, so it's been pretty cool. But, uh, and then over in the corner, my kids love Harry Potter, they've been watching Harry Potter movies forever, they read the books. Um, again, some more uh, Hobbit and Lord of the Rings swords. Um, and uh, tucked in behind, you'll probably see him later, we've got posters because Glowbox, um, there's a guy, his name is Jesse, who owns Glowbox. Um, I hooked up with him a few years ago. I originally started with just a regular poster for the 27 by 40 inch posters that were not lit. And that was, once I went to this, I was like hooked. And so I've got like a zillion posters and that's pretty fun. But you can see like, again, like, Blade Runner, um, the original Harrison Ford, that replica, the uh, Tomeni Suki Blaster, it's called. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, uh, Indiana Jones and a lot of Marvel. My kids love Marvel. And so the Guardians of the Galaxy, you got the, the really cool, this is uh, from a guy on Etsy that had this custom made. It's actually made of aluminum. It's super heavy, super wicked. Uh, and then Tony Stark, the Iron Man helmet. In the corner, we've got a light there right now, but uh, we can show that later on too. Some of the Dark Knight, uh, some, uh, some of our favorite movies as well. Love all that. Um, so as you come in here, um, I'll just touch on this real quick. That's my grandfather's 1963 RCA console. It still works. We had all the tubes and things that blew out. We had them replaced with solid state stuff, so it, it still works awesome. 
And then uh, again, another glow box over here. So we switch the posters out depending on uh, sometimes the time of year. Sometimes we'll do Christmas posters. Sometimes we'll do Halloween posters. And other times we're just in the mood for something. I actually have these posters up. Do you know why? Because the guy behind the camera, I asked him his favorite movies and he's gave me a couple of them and I, I put those posters up. So Spider-Man No Way Home is pretty wicked and that's, uh, that turned out pretty awesome. So as we come into the kitchen, you'll see again, um, we have some really, really crazy, I don't know where you want to start here, but maybe we'll go to the TV first. Uh, this is the, the new Sony X91J. It's an 85 inch TV. I had a Vizio that I just replaced this one with uh, just a couple of months ago and it's been super and awesome. And then um, you'll see all the subwoofers. I've got SVS subs in here and everything. But on top, and going around here, you will see my collectibles. I am what they call a dork, a complete nerd. And some of the movies, you'll see some of the things like, so we have Lizard, uh, we have uh, uh, Wolverine here, obviously the Joker mask. We got the symbiote Spider-Man. But these things are things that I always loved as a kid and my kids really got into the movies and everything. As funny, as much as I love Star Wars and I grew up as that was my big movie, the only thing I really have are the lightsabers and some of the, uh, the helmets. So Mandalorian, Boba Fett. I do have the, uh, the E11 blaster that was done from the original uh, Shepperton Studios in England. And uh, so those, those turned out really, really cool. Love those things to death. And then up on top, all of mostly Sideshow and a lot of XM Studios. So Spider-Man was, when I was a kid, that was, that was my biggest thing. I love Spider-Man. So Electro, Rhino, Doc Ock, Mysterio, um, and then coming over to Venom and Carnage. That uh, Venom was my first statue that I got. And then, of course, we've got Thanos, Lady Death, Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk. Really, really cool stuff. And um, they've just been a, been a blast. We love grabbing them, unboxing them, and... Um, and just, they're just great to look at. That is our artwork. So um, we really, really enjoy them, and the kids love them. I can't lie, I love them too. Um, some of the last ones I'll show you real quick in this room here is we have the Chubby line. So we have Chubby Deadpool, <laughs> we have Chubby Superman, Aquaman, and then Spider-Man and Batman, of course. There's also a Chubby Venom coming, but that's not gonna be for about six months. And then uh, we can follow into the last room is actually the bedroom. And so in this room, we don't use it too much to watch movies, although if we're watching something more adult themed in the other rooms, the kids will come in here and watch something, uh, something for themselves. But we still have a 5.1 channel in here with another SVS subs and again, some more collectibles. Uh, the... Uh, the Transformer lines by XM Studios, they are just a, a blast, the intricacies of those, and they are massively heavy. I'm glad that shelf can hold the weight because it is a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you'll see, and then we have like uh, Witchblade, and that's from the anime series, and then you have uh, Thor, and down on the bottom there, you've got, uh, and there's our Daily Planet. Doom, he's, he's, he's awesome, I'm telling you, he's, he's like one of my favorites. And then uh, back over on this side, we've got some more, the last ones here. Deadpool, I kept those together from basically the movie, Cable. And then of course, the, uh, this is actually a Prime 1 Studios makes that one from the Predator. And this is also a Prime 1 Alien, although he'll be gone. I actually sold him, I have a different one coming. Guardians of the Galaxy, we absolutely love him, and, uh, and Rocket and Groot, and then, of course, Batman. But, uh, yeah, we basically, we have theaters in all of our main rooms. Um, it's nice to be able to bounce from one to another if we're tired and we want to get into bed and watch something here at the end, we do that. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. And this was the last thing. It was funny. Michael noticed these right away. These are the alt modes of the Transformers that are up on top there. So they're pretty cool. So each piece that they make, they also make their their counterpart of what they turn into. Pretty awesome. Well, Joel, we've looked at just kind of a brief overview. Now I would love to kind of, let's just dive deep into this living room setup. Tell us the dimensions that we're working with here. Uh, so uh, the house basically is, was really small. It was only like 850 square feet. 
when we bought it originally. We put an addition on, but the room is only 13 by 17, mm -hmm. and the ceiling is like seven foot nine inches. Yeah. Um, and we, I bought the house because I was already like into home theater, and um, the girl I was with when we bought the house, she, I was working tons, mm -hmm. and she was like, you know, she's going out there trying to look for houses, and I literally. I just needed a room, and I, this was way back. So sure. I mean, we're talking about '95. So I was just starting to get into home theater more so, right. and I knew I wanted a dedicated room. I literally walked in the door, the front door. I walked in. I went like this, and I'm like, "Yeah, we'll take it." This, this, <laughs> that was it. This will work, yeah. and that was it because I knew I just needed that square room sure. with not too much stuff, yeah. and I knew that this would work well enough at that point. You know, yeah. you're you're obviously. If I was going to build or do an art on the house now, sure. things would be different. Yeah. Because um, we have to make some compromise and try to work with the space that we've got. Sure. Um, but that was it. So I was like, yeah, this is going to be perfect. Um, so th that's how it started. And I, you know, I, I had my speakers that I, I literally moved in from down from Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. I drove, I had a, a, a Toyota Celica. Right. And I drove with nothing more than my clothes. And my stereo and speakers. No way. That was all I oh came down goodness. here with, and um, and so that was like so when we got the house, you know, we put all that up and we bought a TV, a Hitachi Ultra Vision. Yeah. Um, which is funny because that was a four thousand dollar TV yeah. back then. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at what you can get for so much cheaper now. For sure. You know, it's just it's just kind of crazy. So this is kind of unlikely. I mean, most people don't think to put a screen and a projection in their living room, but you right. did that. Well, we didn't have a choice yeah. either. But um, yeah, and it, it actually turned out really, really cool. Um, the house was built in like 1972. Mm -hmm. So this wall actually had that like ridiculously thin, um, that uh, cardboard looking like, you know, the, sure. the board. Yeah. And it was just a board, it was super thin. And um, so, um, when we were looking at painting, we had originally had this all white. And then I, w with a projector, you know, you get so much light sure. leak and that bleed and it yep. just washes out the picture. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so let's do something dark. Right. And I was sh literally showing my wife, I'm like, okay, so here's some color schemes. Mm -hmm. And she saw this home theater that had this, ro this you know, rock, this yeah. rock around the, the, this, uh, the screen. Sure. And she's like, could we do that? And I was like, well, there's I've YouTube. Got, right? I've got YouTube. <laughs> I've got some friends that do that do that kind of work, so I'll exactly. ask them. And um, so I tore down that board and put up the Hardy backer board. Did all that myself. We have actually a home video and, and pictures of me doing it. Cool. Uh, and did all the 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 rock, and then you'll see in the kitchen one. Then she since I did this, right? And I did a good enough job. She's like, "Can you do the kitchen?" Nice. Yeah, except for that's a huge wall. So. <laughs> Took a lot more time. <laughs> took huh? a lot more time. Um, I'll say that, uh, you know, lots of times we learn by making mistakes. Yeah, sure. And if one thing, like I did this so that I actually made it so it was exactly the size of, of the elite screen. Gotcha. And so it's set in on that board. In retrospect, I would have just built a, a wall, a, a little, like a two by four. Sure. To attach it there and not have it sunk in. Gotcha. But you can't see it. And at night when you're watching it, you don't notice it. And uh, no one would go, hey, is that built into that or whatever? But... It worked out great. And um, when we were doing this too, it was interesting because I originally had a 110 inch screen. Okay. And I was gonna go bigger and right. I was gonna go to a 135. Sure. But that would have brought it out really far. Right. Yeah. And there was, and so my wife who wanted the rock, I was like, okay, I'll compromise. Yeah, gotcha. It's gotta be nice. Yeah. And um, and so we went to a 120. Okay. Um, so at so least- a 120 and 16 by nine? Yeah, and it was from, I bought on Amazon. I think it was like just under 500 bucks yeah. at the time. Um, you know, it's neutral, it's and it's been great, but obviously, you know, we'll talk about some of the other things, but uh, you know, making it a darker room, sure, with the with the green on the walls and the mm -hmm. really dark green ceiling, right, made all the difference in the world, yeah. You know, we didn't have that, like I said, with the whitish walls, it was just so much bleed and it sure. just wrecked it, so I didn't like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's talk since we're up here in the front, let's yep. talk about like your speakers that we've got up front and this beautiful woodwork here. Tell us all about that. Yeah, well, I, uh, the short story is is that we actually had some other. I actually had originally a glass and metal one. Okay. And that was actually funny because the um, the clips here didn't fit. 
you had to literally take the glass top off, mm. set it in, and then it had some rattle. So I put some, uh, you know, a little, uh, what do you call it, blanket underneath yep. it so it would dampen it a little bit. Sure. But uh, I actually built this myself. I just used nice. uh, some uh, yellow pine and, uh, and you know, did uh, all the metal pipes and that to put it together. Yeah. So it worked out great. And I built it to the size that I needed it to. Yeah. Um, and with, again, talking about the little bit of compromise with the room, I can't put, I didn't want to have this all the way to the ceiling because gotcha. it would have looked funny. Yep. So I had to drop it down. So like some of the choices, like how high this was, was basically because of that. Sure. And when I was looking at subwoofers, there were some other subwoofers that were taller. Right. Um, a friend of mine has these big double 18 inch ones. <laughs> He's a little nuts. That's him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I couldn't do that because obviously uh, I couldn't even build back in here because the garage is right behind it. Gotcha. So there was no way to go behind. And I thought about it and I was mm -hmm. like, well, if I have separates, am I, could I put it in the wall? Sure. There was just no way to do it yeah. because the house was so small. Yeah. Um, so again, compromising, but hopefully not, you know, to any weird extent. Yeah. So I actually have, I have a Pioneer. I have the Elite, the 901. Okay. Um, I bought that just because of the fact that I wanted to have full 11 channels. Mm -hmm. And um, and and their their D amps are just great, yeah. and uh, I I really don't lack for power. That's sure. for sure. Yep. And the Klipsch, of course, um, the RF 83s. Yeah. Um, these I bought back in 2007. Okay. Um, still have them. The center channel uh, is from the same group, and you will get to the rears in the back as well. Yeah. Um, and I basically use Apple TV for almost all of our movie watching. Mm -hmm. I do have a PlayStation 5. I have the Xbox, the new one. But um, we basically use the the Apple TV to watch all our movies. Sure. And then of course, um, I, I I love them. They're you know for for the bang for the buck that you get with the SVS, yeah. the PB16s. They're bad, man. They I they, they, they are they are. They shake this room. Big yeah, time, they do. Man. They do. They shake pretty good. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've, I've loved those. And they uh, I, I originally had the PB13. Mm -hmm. I had one. Okay. And then literally they had that where you could trade up. You know, every in a year you could trade up, sure. and so they came out with the 16s, and I'm like, hmm, yeah. let me think about that. That's okay, right. let's give it a try, and they send it out, and of course, you know, they, yeah. they got to know that if you're trying, you're not going to send yep. it back. So once you get in the home, it's not leaving. Yeah, you're it's not, not leaving, and especially being the weight, 175 pounds, you don't oh. even want to box it up to ship it back. No, they're a beast. Yeah, so, those uh, are phenomenal. Yeah, so I went duels, and it, it ended up being great. Um, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. That part's been that's been awesome. So definitely got a really really incredible front sound stage. So we've talked about all the gear here. Now let's move to the back wall. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so tell us what we got going on in the back of your room. All right, so this was actually something, again, um, I, I talk about this and not in a, in a negative way, but it's always like, you know, you have a room, this is your house, yeah. the living room, it's gotta be a, it's gotta be livable. Like I said, even in the, sure. like the couches, like we couldn't, and I'll talk about that a little bit uh, more too, but we couldn't do theater seats sure. because I actually have a bad back, a bad neck, and sitting in a theater seat actually hurts. Gotcha. So normally, like I'm laying down on pillows, my wife is there with me, and the kids are laying around. So this right, provided sure. a really nice thing as far as that's concerned. Yeah. But going back to the speakers, originally before the before Atmos, we had the 62s that okay. were with that same uh, that same system were up in the corners gotcha. really nice and high, especially here because you literally couldn't put it low because you'd sure. bump into it. Yep. It's a very small, th and so literally even when I had it low, I tried to get as low as I could, but people, you know, you had to watch people's heads felt like they were trying to duck out of the way. Yeah. So um, that was something that we kind of like had them there originally. But then once we went to Dolby Atmos, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we took these and we, I'm like, okay, I got to lower these down. Yeah. And then, um, and then that provides when, better separation from absolutely. that top and the bottom. And as we discussed, you know, when we were watching through yeah. the demos, the negative part about mm -hmm. the room is the fact that this isn't far enough up. So right. you don't, it's, it's right there. It's pretty close. Sure. Now I did try to adjust it as much as I could to not have the sound so prominent mm -hmm. in them. Yeah. But they're so close. Sure. How can it not be like yeah. that? You know? And I think that a lot of people can relate to that because... The reality is we don't have perfect rooms. I mean, we come into an existing home or, you know, maybe there's just limitations in the budget or there's a bunch of different reasons yeah, absolutely. that we don't have it exactly the way that we would like to. But the great thing, and I love what you've done, is you've made an incredible space with what you have and it's phenomenal. Yeah, and trying to, thank you, I appreciate it. And trying to work through those things and trying to find the best solutions, yeah. which is like the next part. So like I originally had these on the sides and then I put them into the to the rears sure. and I got the 250 
the dipole mm -hmm. on that side over there, right. basically like that. And then I couldn't put it here. Yeah, because you'd knock it off. Right. So then I went ahead and I got the, the 5800 and put okay. that into the wall. Gotcha. Uh, went to, to the ceiling, strung it all down, yeah. and, and got this to work. So now they're relatively the same level. Sure. Um, and I, I was trying to make sure that the, that the frequency response, how they sounded, was as close to each other as possible. Gotcha. So it didn't sound like you know it was out of left field. Like, what's that one doing over there? Sure. Um, and then, of course, we did the four uh, ceiling Atmos. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the 3650s, the clips are here and here. Um, I, I, I'll send you a picture. It was funny because my son, who was, I think he was seven at the time, mm -hmm. Um, he, he went up into the attic. Oh, for real! And he went up in there. I've got a picture of him looking through the hole because no we found way. the spot to do it and, do, and did the holes and did that. That's so he awesome. crawled in there and did all the wires there. It's pretty funny. Nice. Um, but At it, seven years old. Se seven years old. He was in there crawling. That's fantastic. Um, and originally, like uh, when I first had some speakers that I was putting outside when the house was really small. Yeah. Those trusses are only like this big, mm. and I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. So I was trying to string speaker wires, and I was crawling through <laughs> there. I got through two trusses before I flipped out, and I was like, I can't do this. I can't yeah. do this. Send and the then boy you, up there. Right. And you think, and we're in Florida, yeah. so you think of those horror stories yeah. of somebody dying up in there. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that didn't happen. I'm yeah. glad. He did a great job. He did, and he did, he did an awesome job of climbing in there. And then those came with the white mm -hmm. grills. And again, trying to make do with what you've got. And yeah. I went ahead and I spray painted those, made sure that they got the, so they were dark and they didn't look like they were, you know, sticking out like sore thumbs there. Yeah. But uh, but they turned out great. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. So on your projection, you've got 120 or 130. 120 inch. So 120 inch, um, uh, 16 by nine screen, and then right above us, 50 50. Yeah, Epson 50 50. Beautiful image. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I the, think you get a huge bang for the. I, now I'm a fan of JVC. Absolutely love JVC. Me, me as well. But there's a big difference in price. Yes. I mean, you're jumping up considerably. You're going two to three thousand dollars more, and so that's something phenomenal that we want. Phenomenal image, though. Yeah, thank you. We wanted to be. We we're trying to be. It's that balance, you know. You mm -hmm. want to. You want higher, but you also have to say, you know what? Yeah. The pockets are only so deep. Yeah. You want to be reasonable. Yeah. Um, and maybe, like I said, you know, we talk about if we did it all over again. Mm -hmm. If we had a house that was a dedicated room for just theater, yeah, gotcha. you might splurge and do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, we we've done things to try to make the room as as good as it can be yeah. darkening the walls instead of those light blackout uh, shades to yeah, make sure that, that was that... so cool because initially I came into the room you had me sit down <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking over here I'm going okay that's gonna be a major distraction on that screen and he tells you know the um, yeah we want the, the person we tell, we tell tells the person. the person that you know it's theater time and I was like oh yeah he's got it set up so we got what kind of Shades, do you know? You know what? I you, can't remember. Where'd you pick those up? So I picked them up at uh, at Home Depot. Gotcha. They were they they actually measured them and then did them. They they actually had to do it twice. Yeah. The first time they messed up, it wasn't me. I gave them the correct. They they say what's the inner dimensions, and I gave it to them, mm -hmm. and they cut it too short. Okay. Um. So they actually had to redo them, yeah. but that was no big deal. And that but, did a great job blocking out. Oh right? yeah, you don't get anything even during the day, like watching football yeah. on Sundays. Pff, shut that down, and and we do have the curtains if we want to shut it out even more, but right. we don't need it. It's not yeah. really necessary. Super cool, man. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. in a living room setup, you can't do what I did. You can't put the uh, static, clean, kind of blackout fabric. Right. That looks kind of weird because you got your main street right out here. Right, right. So having those electronic uh, curtains or shades, that is super, super cool. So one of the big things that we obviously love is movies. And so I got addicted to posters from uh, Glowbox. Jesse, uh, the guy who owns the place, is awesome. So Alexa, turn on posters. So we have two of them in the house. They rock. I've got like a hundred plus posters of all of our favorite movies. Sometimes movies that aren't even that good, I'll get the poster because the poster is so cool. Um, but Mission Impossible, that's that's to you, Mike. That's that's yours. <laughs> all right. So I know there's got to be a story behind this. Tell me about that. This is a great piece. Um, a lot with the collectibles. You know, if you're trying to get like actual movie memorabilia. The cost is ridiculous, sure. right? Yeah. So, but even things like this, when they're done really, really well, they can get quite pricey. Yeah. So, um, the guy I got this from on Etsy. Um, he, the the price that I paid, he's now charging twice as much at least. Yeah. 
um, because it's you just such start a... start somewhere. So he starts low. He starts low, and now he's, now he's up there in price. It's crazy. Man, but this, this is, is actually awesome. made with actually, uh, like, true aluminum. Yeah. Um, it's got the actual, like, these leather straps. No it's, way. I mean, it's built solid. It's, like, um, legit. It's totally legit. And as, like, if, if I show you these two, like, all of this stuff, because we've got the memorabilia, we've also had to try to do some dampening of the mm. sound so that when the, the theater is going, it's not rumbling and shaking everything. Sure, yeah, yeah. So like I put these little rubber pieces on there, nice, so that it doesn't it doesn't rattle on the wall. Gotcha. But um, yeah, this one was really really cool. And the guy when he made it, he did it. It was done. He kept showing me all of these wonderful pictures of it as it was in its process. Yeah. And then he he sent me an email and he's like, hey, listen, I got some bad news. Mm -hmm something happened with the paint and the paint had dripped a little bit. Oh, gotcha. And so he was like, you know, I, I'm going to leave it up to you. He goes, if you're not happy with this, sure. he goes, I'll do another one. So I asked some friends, I was like, what do you think? I go, cause it kind of looked cool or whatever, right. but it was, it, it, you could tell you it tell wasn't it, perfect. It was, a, it was a flaw. It was a flaw. And uh, so he redid it all. Um, and then had it for me like in two weeks after, after the first one. So yeah. it was really, really awesome. So check this out though. I mean, you got like the dings and you got the, yeah, the bullet. I mean like, oh my goodness. Like, so where's it at? Yeah. yeah, right there is a all bullet. The, all the bullets. Uh, the claw marks. Yeah, the claw marks from, from <sighs> Panther. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Dude, so much detail in that. That is gorgeous, man. And like you said, it's got some weight to it, too. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. It's awesome. You know? Man, that is fantastic. If I can find the picture, I'll send it to you. All right. I have the twins. I have twin boys that are now eight. And when they were like four years old or five, yeah. which he was hardly much taller than this thing like sure. this, and he's holding it. So he's oh, in his Captain America awesome. outfit with this thing as a shield. Oh my goodness. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't accurate or true to size, yeah. but uh, yeah, he loved it. Dude, that is <laughs> fantastic, man. I love it. Thanks. All right, so uh, next little bit of collectibles is obviously the Harry Potter series. My kids love the books. They love the movies. We've probably watched them, oh my God, probably it's like five, six times all the way through all of them. And they still watch them. Um, but we have the wands. Uh, we have a lot of the collectibles are actually uh, parts that they sell at Universal. And um, so we've got the hourglass and some of their, they're really, really kind of unique. Um, they've got the, you know, the, not just this. So this is actually functional and you can actually turn it. So like if the kids are in trouble, I say you're in trouble for this long. And they know to be careful That's with that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, well, they got to. Or um, I can tell them, like, if they can use the little compass here and then find out, you know, where their bedroom is. And I shove them off the bed, too. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's actually pretty cool stuff. And then, of course, more of the, the Wraith swords and everything from Lord of the Rings. That's another. I grew up with Lord of the Rings, yeah. reading the books. J.R. Tolkien was amazing. Um, and so I, I got these swords actually this past year. I'll show you the other ones in a second. But uh, those, those things are just wicked awesome really nice replicas they look nice they feel heavy they're nice they're they're very very heavy um the i have one that's actually sharp these ones they've all kind of dulled the blades a little bit so gotcha. that you uh you can't get cut necessarily yeah. <laughs> you could certainly get impaled but we don't really run around with those too often certainly i love the one on the right man that is beautiful yeah isn't that wicked and uh oh, super cool yeah we we try to keep those uh try to keep them on the walls as best we can the kids don't get to play with them but uh sure i'm sure they will eventually when they get older <laughs> not too much all right so uh next on the little bit of collectibles uh some more lord of the rings um we've got sting here and this is from the hobbit and then of course we've got the king's sword which is also wicked by the way this one is the one that is sharp i mentioned it this one's sharp that'll cut you especially the point is really good uh, and then Gandalf sword is here as well. Uh, and it, you know, it's funny as the, as you saw in the beginning with the, uh, the tour of the kitchen with, in my bedroom with all the statues, Star Wars, I grew up, man, I love Star Wars. That's my thing. That's my jam. I grew up, I was what, seven years old when I first started the original Star Wars, love it to death, but I don't have that many collectibles on. I have a few helmets and a few things, but I do have, uh, lightsabers from Vader's vault lightsabers, rocking awesome, great company, great people. Um, and they're actually in Georgia and they come down a lot of times to Orlando for some of the comic cons and things like this. But, uh, the other one that I got is the, is the DL blaster 44. Um, this guy made Han Solo's blaster. He has a bunch of different versions. This is the Greedo killer one. Yes, yes, yes. Greedo did shoot first. Um, and so that one, uh, I've had for oh, about five, six years. He doesn't make any more. Unfortunately, he just, uh, he, he got too busy with his normal life and everything. Uh, but then uh, we have uh, Luke's first lightsaber, Anakin's lightsaber. We have the hero lightsaber, again, from Vader's vault, and they're pretty awesome. 
And uh, at the bottom down there, we've got the Stormtrooper helmet. And it just so happened that the black and white Stormtrooper helmet fit perfectly with the PlayStation 4 controllers. Matched, so my wife is like, yeah, that looks good. So that's important. <laughs> All right, apparently if I said PS4 and not PS5, I'm an idiot. My son came in here while we're taping. He's like, by the way, Dad, it's PS4, not it's PS5, not PS4. Yes, I know. I misspoke. Oh, well. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. I need to be corrected every so often myself. You're uh, oh. Heath Ledger's The Joker. Uh, Bane. Uh, I, I bought these. I had these done on uh, their, their metal prints, which are really, really cool. Um, this is one of my favorite scenes, especially when he's clapping during yeah. that one. It's awesome. Um, and I actually got this mask off of Etsy. Um, another guy was making these, and they were just great. So but a big fan of Etsy. You can get some really cool things off there. I, you know what's funny? I don't have a lot, but the things that I do have, they're pretty wicked. I like it. Um, so this was this was one that was really, really awesome to get. But again, Heath Ledger's Joker. Oh, yeah. Uh, Phenomenal. Just that, that whole thing. And regardless of the fact, you know, the unfortunate thing that he passed away. Yeah. Uh, but man, what a job and, and what a character he played. And that was just something that just, man, it just hits hard. Yeah. So yeah, one of my favorite, one of my favorites. That's why he has a little whole section to himself. Nice. All right, Joel. So when we first walk in your home, I mean, this is the first thing that you see. You're all about family. There's no doubt. You've created three beautiful areas. Well, technically, I guess two places for the family. Then you and your wife have your own setup in the bedroom. But tell us a little bit about this, and I know this has got a cool story. Yeah, this has actually got a really, really cool story. Um, this is my family, so if you see yeah. my wife, she's originally from the Czech Republic. Uh, we have three boys. We have twins that are now eight years old. My oldest boy is just about to turn 12. Um, and family is actually how I got into basically home theater, technological mm. stuff, film, you name it. That's yeah. all from my mom mostly and my grandfather. This is my grandfather on my mom's side. This is cool. 1963, I think it was made. It's an RCA console. It's got, you know, it's got the, the actual record player inside. It still works. I mentioned it earlier, but uh, basically they had all the tubes and everything were taken out of it by a guy who does electronics and right. put in solid state stuff. So it will never have to be, you know, uh, helped again sure. to keep running. It'll run pretty much forever. Yeah. Um, but he's actually the one, like I have actual, when, when, when he pat my mom had a stroke. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, uh, so uh, a few years ago I went back up and I found all of our eight millimeter no and super way. eight millimeter film. Oh, wow. So when, when, not just when I was a child, yeah. but when my grandfather, 1939, he had his first airplane, black and white, super eight, uh, you know, film that he did. Yeah. Um, and he has that, he has hunting videos. My mom's whole childhood were all done. And we were able to take those, and I converted all of that to digital. Cool. So I have Preserve my whole that. life, my brother's whole life, everything, and it's just nice. awesome. And this was one of the pride and joys of my grandfather because he That's really so cool. loved, again, technology. Yeah. He loved cameras, and he loved taking pictures and loved taking videos. Mm. So this was something that uh, it was cherished for a long time. And when um, my mom had her stroke and my, when my grandfather and grandmother, they passed, uh, this was in storage for a long time. Mm. So... Um, I said, listen, I go, if, you, if, if uh, nobody wants it, yeah. I said, I'll certainly take it because it, so cool. it has a thing. It's 100%. really touching to me because I listen to this all the time when I was a little baby. Yeah. And I say to my grandpa, my grandfather's a lot. So yeah. we shipped it down and, uh, and there it goes. So that was kind of like my first like, you know, real introduction when I was little yeah. about technology and, and the things that really meant a lot to me. Yeah. Um, which actually kind of, you know, and these are the original speakers and everything. Yeah. So besides the electronics that make it work, yeah. it's still original. Sure. Um, but it kind of leads me into how I got into even home theater, yeah. which was my mom was always taking pictures. So she was in a technology. I remember, uh, when I was young, you know, getting Walkmans, right, you know, I and the, one, and the yep. smaller they got, yep. the cooler they were, you know, when you had that Walkman it was just the size of a cassette, it was that's cool. Right. But in, uh, in Buffalo, New York, there was a place called uh, stereo advantage. Okay. And that's where my dad, like when the, when CDs first came out, my, my mom and my dad, they went and bought that and they bought CDs yeah. and they were just so cool and into yeah. that. Um, but that place, I walked into a demo of Aladdin. Mm. And so the yeah, scene in the desert, you know. Yeah. Who dares disturb my slumber? And I heard they had, so, I was like looking around the place like, and they had subwoofers. The exactly. And they had subwoofers in there. And I was like, and I had never experienced I feel like it was like you know, my first time with a girl or something. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it was just incredible. Mm. And I was like, and that literally just hooked me. 
Yeah. And I was like, man, that's that's it. It's not just like you know, I like little Bose speakers when sure. I was when I was a kid, and uh, this was a totally different animal. Yeah. And man, that hooked me. And then I was like, I'm going bigger you've been on speakers. The, you've been on this journey ever since. Ever since, and always upgrading and finding new, cooler things and things that could you know really. And it's not just about having the things. Correct. It's about the experience yeah. and what they can bring to you. Yeah. So like sometimes like I watch, I see people like they'll have like, you know, big speakers and a small screen. Sure. Or they'll have like, a, you know, a giant screen and yep. a really small speaker. Sure. And it's like, well, you know, the whole thing is visual right. along yeah. with that audio. Yeah. And if you have that balance yeah. of those things, to me, that's just the best. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the journey I went on with it, and I'm still doing it right now. Super cool. And you've even mixed with kind of the old with the new here. So Yeah, we, right got, the I, we got the iPad, so I can actually go ahead and hook that up and play it, and, uh, nice. and it still sounds great. And y'all do, like, Apple Music, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, almost. All, I used to have physical. I used to have, you know, um, DVDs, sure. and then we moved on to Blu-rays. And uh, um, it actually more started with uh, video games with the uh, PlayStation 4 yeah. that I stopped buying physical discs gotcha. and just did downloads. Yeah. And so PlayStation 5, the new Xbox, same thing. And I got rid of all of my Blu-rays and do most of my things through Apple, through iTunes. And a lot of times they have things on sale, five buck movies. Yeah. I'm sure. like, okay, that's that's nothing. Yeah. Um, and so like, yeah, I'll buy those. But we have, that's what we basically do our, our home theater uh, in the kitchen, everything. So we just pop, them in, pop that in the, on the Apple TV and rock and roll. Nice. Yeah. All right, so we're back in the kitchen. Um, I guess, what, what do you want to cover? You want to talk about uh, the... Yeah, just hit the sound system and kind of what we've got here, and then we'll move on to these awesome <laughs> collectibles, man, because that is a big... It's amazing how many collectibles. Your wife calls them... Well, she used to call the dolls. original ones dolls and toys, so now, <laughs> well, now you, she respects these ones, so these, that's a good thing. Yeah, these are on a whole new level, man. This yeah. is pretty trippy, especially the ones in the bedroom. Those are cool. Yeah, so, yeah, so fun. what do you have here, and kind of how did you end up with, in this kind of configuration here? Yeah, um, so basically when, when I first moved into the, into the house, yeah. we actually bought, I, I wanted three TVs, okay. bedroom here and there. So I, it was something I had right off the bat when we put the addition on the house. Sure. And um, so I had a 50-inch uh, Sony and so, you know, obviously those with a big bezel, really yeah. thick and everything like this. Um, I actually had a, an 80 inch Vizio mm -hmm. and um, I actually had a friend of mine that they needed a new TV. And I said, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking about upgrading. Yeah. So I sold that to them, nice price, and then uh, went with this. So this is the new Sony X91J. Um, so it's still their, their, their typical LED, yeah. but this room, as you, you know, as, as we showed earlier, sure. it's got two double doors here. It's got three windows yep. side by side. A lot of ambient light. A lot of here. light. And so going OLED mm -hmm. was going to be a nightmare because of the, the more reflective sure. screen. Um, so, you know, I, I went with the, with this one. It's, it's great. The black levels are gorgeous. Yeah, it's man. nice, isn't it? I mean, it's no, way nice. nice. That's gorgeous. And it's funny cause people are like, sometimes, you know, when I'm having, you know, conversations with people about home theater and they're just like, oh, you know, I, I jokingly, I'll say this. I was playing video games one time and I'm like, oh, I'm on the small one. And they're right. like, what's a small one? I'm in the kitchen. They're like, what size is that one? I'm like 80. And they're like, right. what? Yeah. <laughs> now it's 85. Yeah. <laughs> it's even bigger. So this is our small kitchen TV. Right. Um, but this is a, obviously a big room. Sure. You know, so this is like 18 by 22 or 23 feet yeah. uh, with a center island. So when we're cooking, yeah. lots of times we're going ahead and we're watching sports. So we'll sure. put on a hockey game. We'll put on the football game, the yeah. weekends and so on and so forth. Sure. So having a small screen, that's not what I want. I would like to have the biggest screen I could possibly yeah. afford, you know, and that looks good here. Oh, man, so, it's gorgeous. A yeah. nice centerpiece. Very well laid out. It's kind of interesting. Kind of, we're in the kitchen, but we've got a, a sitting area here. Man. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Well, because lots of times, like you know, we'll we'll be sitting here watching a movie, and then we'll finish up eating, and then we'll kind of sit here and just kind of hang out. Sure. And then sometimes we're like, okay, let's switch over to the theater and do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a great TV. I love it. I think it's it's fantastic. And you know, it's always funny when you're when you're nitpicking between TVs like yeah. that. You could pick one and be fine with it, um, but I definitely did go with Sony. Sony was uh, was a really really good choice, especially out of the box color accuracy yeah. is is really remarkable. So I went with that. I love it, man. So um, I'll go to the I'll go to the the amp. Actually, I've got the Pioneer again, the Elite, and I've got the SC twenty seven. Okay. Um, and more than enough power. This actually used to be in the theater room sure. before I did Atmos. So once I went to the eleven channels. Uh, you know, this one came in here because it's perfectly fine for this system. Yeah. Um, and it's just fantastic. 
And again, I've got the, the Apple TV, the 4K, mm -hmm. and I've actually got that strung directly to the TV. Gotcha. So it's getting the 4K, um, sure. and then only the audio is going back out through the fiber optic okay. so I can get the sound. Sure. And I've got the Definitive Technologies, got the 2000s, the 1000s on the sides, and then in the backs, they're the 800s. Gotcha. Uh, but they, um, they you know, I mean, you heard it. Sure. Uh -huh. It's a nice, yeah. solid sound for sure. a kitchen. Yeah. And um, I, it's a little bit warmer than, than the Klipsch. Yeah. Um, but it, but in this room because it's tiled and there's hard you know you you know you got the tile you got sure. the uh, cabinets and the you know the, the, the granite the, yeah. the granite it mm -hmm. makes a big difference to have that little warmer sure. feeling to it so it never feels pingy in this room yeah no definitely even though not. you would think it would be so. sure and then again this is the same the rock that. <laughs> My wife, after I did that one in there, she goes, can you do the kitchen wall? That's cool, man. Yeah, but do you see how big this is? Right, that's gonna take there's a little time. There's so balance. much, there's so much wall here, it's crazy. And in there, it was just doing the outsides. Yeah. And this was, this was, this was a lot of work. So. That's a big chore, but it looks great. Man. But also I can do this, you know, I can kind of go. I did that. Yes, I built that wall. <laughs> Because we do have people come and they're just yeah. like, oh, who did that? You know, did you do that wall? Nice. Did somebody do that for you? I'm like, no, I did it. And yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it ended up being really great. But uh, yeah, we love this room. Yeah, and so while we're up here, you got two subwoofers here as well? Yep, I have, uh, this one's actually the, the PB uh, Pro. Mm -hmm. So the 2000, 2000 yeah. the 2000 Pro, and that's actually just the original 2000. Yeah, gotcha. Um, I contacted SVS and actually got another extra grill so they would match because gotcha. that original one had that metal grill, yep, which sure. was really nice. Yeah. I'm not sure if they went this way to be less expensive mm -hmm. or what but uh, at least they match but right. they're just great sounded subs and sure. again with speakers that aren't real big yeah. you need that extra power yeah. and I think it blends awesome in this yeah. room yeah and then maybe the last thing while we're up here we've got some cool paintings up here and artwork so I know there's something there. Yeah, my my wife is from the Czech Republic, um, and when we first started visiting, like this is funny. This is actually done with one of my good cameras. That was a little Sony point and shoot, um, and so uh, you know we, we, she likes to keep that uh, that connection to her homeland. Yeah. Um, and I respect that totally. And yeah. we used to go like when we first met. Right. We'd go twice a year to the Czech Republic. Nice. Um, and we started. We were teaching dance over there, and they would have workshops with us to come over, and they would fly us over to do it. It was great. Yeah. Um, um, but now we have three kids. Right. In the last three years with COVID, yeah. we haven't been able to go. So we're dying mm. to go back. So nice. hopefully this summer. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, hopefully that'll work out. But again, with some of the other things that we talked about you know, before with the kids and, yeah. and their, their busy schedules yeah. with acting, uh, we're not sure we're going to be able to get to go <laughs> because sure. it's, it's just kind of getting crazier again with that. So yeah, and being but, um, a photographer, having your own artwork in your home, man, that is super super cool. Yeah, as long as it's good artwork, right? Yeah, I love it. I think <laughs> here's it's a terrible picture. Take a look at it. No, it's definitely not that. But yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's something that uh, again, it, it brings her home. Yeah, brings that little bit of home here, so it's nice. All right, Joel, this is a big part of your home. So tell us about kind of your collectibles here. Yeah, so um, uh, I'll give you the, the, the fastest story I can. I started with these things called hot toys. They are one six scale, um, and my wife used to kind of tease me about them because they were basically glorified dolls. Right. <laughs> She'd say, oh, you're dolls. Uh, and I, I got a collectible. I'll show him in a little bit here, but I got one of these statues that are one quarter scale, and I just fell in love with them. The detail, the art, the, you know, the art direction, how they, they're built. Uh, a lot of these ones that you're looking at right there are either polystone or uh, cold cast porcelain. Those are um, cool. And so, uh, yeah, I, I got uh, I got hooked on collecting them. That hobby is just amazing. So obviously the Joker and the cards. I was looking for that one forever, yeah. and uh, they were selling on eBay for a ridiculous price. And one of the guys from a shop called Spec Fiction, he actually got. Um, they had leftovers that nobody bought. And he got them, and he had them for a normal price, regular retail price, and I picked that one up. And uh, the Symbiote Spider-Man is uh, from Sideshow Collectibles. And the ones on top, the ones on top there are the first one on the left is Lizard right. uh, from the Spider-Man series. He was my first XM Studios piece. And then the Brown Wolverine uh, on the right, he was, I think, my second. Um, and those ones, man, XM Studios, they just, the detail... The intricacies, the design, everything of that company is just stellar. And so, uh, yeah, uh, I got hooked. <laughs> so now I, have, now I have nice things to look at. I know it's not uh, traditional art, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. 
So Joel, I've never seen quite this size collection. I mean, this is a lot. I've been to some other people on our uh, on the home theater tours a couple years ago. A gentleman had he probably had six or seven, maybe in yeah, the back of his yeah, theater yeah. room. How many pieces do you have? Do you think um, somewhere around seventy, a little over seventy? I believe you're politely calling me a dork. No, I think. <laughs> I think it's amazing that you, your wife allows it. My wife, Jessica, would never go for this. Not, I mean, you've consumed the whole house, bro. You, not only did you do the, in the theater room, but then you kind of brought it into the kitchen, which would never happen in my house. And then you brought it into the bedroom, dude. And we're going to see those in more detail too. But kind of tell us like maybe uh, just pick out a couple of them. We'll get some close-up B-roll as we're talking. So you can kind of see the detail that go into these. And I think... That's one of the things that kind of fascinates me. These are truly artwork. They are art, yeah. Somebody has built these probably a lot of times by hand. They painted them, they've crafted them, and there's just so much detail and intricacy that go into each one of these pieces. But maybe pick out a couple of them and kind of tell us a little bit about those. And is there a favorite? No. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they're, well, I'll tell you the truth. It was funny because when, uh, when I first started collecting the statues and I would get them, mm -hmm. I literally, my wife is like, you know, when is this going to end? Yeah. But not in a mean way. She was right, just like, yeah, is yeah. this ever going to end? I'm like, She's no, no. Just curious. But I would go and I would like, this one's never going to go anywhere. This one's never going to go anywhere. This mm -hmm. one might. Yeah. This one will go somewhere. This one, never going to go anywhere. Never. Wow. And I literally had a rating for yeah. them. And I would think of like how awesome they are. There yeah. are a few that like, rate, like, like Hulk transformation, yeah. uh -huh. never going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Captain America, Thanos, Lady Death, never going anywhere. Even the Iron Man, that's one of those ones that's like, it's awesome, maybe he'll go somewhere, you never know. Um, but uh, I know that XM Studios that does most of these pieces, yeah. they're doing a Venom and they're doing a Carnage. So okay. if those ones are like above and beyond these, gotcha. um, I might replace them. You might them. sell them. And yeah, I might, exactly. Because like, that's an upgrade, but they're not leaving the house. Correct. <laughs> and, but the Venom, that one is my first one Dude. that I ever bought. And that was the, the game changer where I sold everything. Literally, I sold virtually everything else yeah. as far as the collectibles were concerned. And just started doing the the statues. Sure. But you're right. They are they are pieces of art. Um, there are lots of them that are in production for two to three years mm, wow. in development. Wow. So like the Doc Ock, him, uh, he's so the, the the engineering difficulties of him mm. and um, and and the tentacles and everything was really challenging for them. Sure. So he was literally on tour for like two three years where people were seeing. The mock-ups. I gotcha. The you know the the original one. Then they had changes to them, and then they had so every every uh, time they had like a comic con yeah. or they had you know one of these events sure. where they were showing off the artwork, they would change. Mm. And so um, yeah, some of them are in, in in production forever in development. I should say in development yeah. forever, uh, and then they end up being like this. Um, and even like the sideshow Spider-Man, that mm -hmm. one was the I think it was the last one they had on their website. Still, to me, is the best Spider-Man. That's um, awesome. But yeah, they're amazing. And one of my most recent was Rhino. Rhino is wicked. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, yes, I do use the word wicked. Yeah, I love <laughs> it, man. That's good. That's you. Yeah, but they they are awesome. But there's no favorites necessarily. Yeah. There are some that are better than others. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, listen, if, if they weren't awesome, yeah, they I wouldn't, wouldn't have bought them. That's true. They wouldn't be. That's true. So for those that are into collectibles like this, what scale are these? I know they're different sizes. Yeah, so almost almost everything that I have is one quarter scale. Okay. Uh, some of the places, I'll just mention them real quick, Sideshow Collectibles. Okay. Uh, XM Studios is not licensed here in the United States, so you mm. have to get them through a third party. Okay. The shipping right now is, I mean, you're paying through the nose. Sure. It's nuts. Uh, but XM Studios, uh, Cosmic Chase is a place on uh, that you can get them. Okay. Uh, Spec Fiction, All right. uh, a guy named Todd that he's he's awesome to work with. I've gotten a bunch of my original XM Studio pieces were from him. But uh, yeah, these are one quarter. Almost everything's one quarter except for just a few little yeah, things. Yeah, some small ones up high. Yeah, and some of the goofy, silly ones that yeah. are fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, but they're one quarter scales. Sweet man. Let's check out the last section that has some really, I think they're phenomenal, man. It's almost yeah, like you fun. saved the best ones for last and, and you saved that for private. You know, like <laughs> that's my personal collection. That's not out on display. Yeah. So let's head into your bedroom. Let's check those out. Man. Absolutely. All right. So now we're here in the bedroom. Um, my wife 
is uh, a huge, huge, heavy sleeper. She loves to sleep. Okay. And the way that we do it is with with white noise. Nice. So we you actually like five point one white noise? white noise all over the place. Wow. So we listen to like thunderstorms, and we'll do uh, no. you know the crashing ocean waves, you know, to kind of so it drowns out drowns out the sounds of the kids when they're up playing games or getting that up. That is and, cool. Yeah. That's so a it turns great out. Idea. Yeah, it turned out great. Um, th this we didn't we don't really watch the TV that sure. much there are some times when the kids will want to watch a movie when we have like if we have other people here sure um, so we'll be watching something in there and they'll do a kids day, kids day in here so the kids will come in here sit on the bed yeah. and they'll watch something so I went with a simple Vizio sure. uh, it's a 65 inch TV but you know it's still a nice size sure, for absolutely. For um, I have a Pioneer Elite again, mm -hmm. and then uh, I went with the Definitive Technologies on the center channel, the 2000 and the 1000s, the 800s in the back. Nice. Um, great enough sound, awesome. Oh, yeah. And of course, again, to fill it up, we have the, the SVS, the <laughs> 1000, not the Pro, but the original yeah. 1000. Um, and the only reason that I don't have uh, duals is because on this side, I have um, I have Baby Yoda. No way. So I don't have room for a sub over here. But maybe I'll change that and I'll put him someplace else. So we'll that, see. That's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so it works out great. Again, we have the Apple TV. Um, those things are just our staple for sure. watching everything. Um, and one thing I didn't really touch on is that obviously we have, you know, I've, I've done smart uh, home through, through basically everything. Sure. I can tell lights out and it'll right. turn everything off. You know, I can turn on the gazebo lights, um, and if I want to watch TV or if I want to watch movies or if I want to watch music, I just tell her to do that and yeah. through the Harmony yeah. and the Harmony app. It goes like this. I know, I know. I'm and I'm and I'm so upset because uh, of the fact that to be honest with you, for me, for what I've programmed it to do, right. it works great. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what's yeah. it through? You know me. Have okay. you ever heard of that? I haven't. So that this connects to you know me. Okay. And you know me has uh, has all the routines. Okay, gotcha. So I can say whatever I want to say, and it clicks over and does it great. So gotcha. it's actually been really functional, really not a problem. Yeah. But the fact that they're not going to support it anymore yeah. is. I'm curious to see what is what is how that's going to shake out and. You know what options we have out there. If this YIO remote is going to be good enough, I saw your video on that, and so, I'm hoping that that's going to be something a little that's bit more good. expensive than Harmony. But yeah, yeah if yeah. it's solid and they they you know develop it well, then it might be worth yeah. You know, if going it's going to if it's going to integrate with people's smart homes, yeah. which obviously that's their their goal. I hope so. I hope yeah. uh, me too because uh, to not have these anymore, I'm yeah. like you know you can see them. You try to find them on eBay. I'm sure. like I want to get another hub in case this one breaks. Yeah. <laughs> so and in some of the video, you're going to see like these rolling lines when we were like in the kitchen and maybe yeah, even yeah, in yeah. here. The LED lights. And the reason is, is the camera is trying to, you know, it, it's seeing, I don't know exactly how to explain that, but it's seeing this rolling shutter and I couldn't fix it on there, but I didn't want to not capture that. Yeah, so I'd well, rather yeah. you guys see rolling lines and see kind of how the style of it and the feel of it and the vibe than for us to just turn those off and it's just kind of you know, black and white. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. the the lights highlight those things and make fantastic. it look. Yeah, they they make it look a lot different than if you're just like if they're off, they look. It's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But it's actually funny because even nowadays when we're like if we're doing anything and they're and they're off, yeah, we're like, man, it seems so weird in here because it's just like it just feels just right when all the it. lights and the colors and it gives you that kind of like you know that that uh, that really nice ambiance there. It's yeah. So nice. talking about that, let's go ahead and go around this room. These have got some big statues. Let's kind of talk about the story behind those. Absolutely. All right, so I kind of grew up watching Transformers as a teenager. Me too. <laughs> Absolutely loved having Transformers. I, now, we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up, so I didn't have a lot of them. I only had maybe three or four pieces. Right, right. Dude, these are phenomenal, man. They Tell are really about cool. These. Yeah, so basically we have the XM Studios line here. This is their Generation 1 Transformers which has their original transformer line and then they put their modern spin on it. So Optimus Prime, he is just amazing. I think he weighs like 70 something pounds. Then you have uh, next to him is Bumblebee, and the, and the, literally the whole bug, the whole Volkswagen bug. Pretty amazing. Then Soundwave with all the his little minions that go along with him. One of my favorite pieces, right there, Starscream. He uh, he had one episode, one part of the movie where he had that purple cape on, where he and the crown, where he became the leader, and uh, they went ahead and did that. And then Megatron. And 
he is just uh, spectacular. All right, so again, this is XM Studios Witchblade. There is a predator head there too next to her, but uh, yeah, that's the only statue I got just because it's beautiful. <laughs> There's no real connection other than uh, then it's beautiful. And then uh, this is the modern Thor. Again, XM Studios, all these ones are in that, but he is just, the, the, I mean, look at the sculpt on that. That's just incredible. They, uh, they really do an amazing job on, on designing these things and making them very unique. And he's on top of a destroyer beating it up. Pretty impressive. And then the last one, again, XM Studios, this Doomsday. And uh, just, I love his screaming portrait. That is just amazing. He's actually one piece except for his hair on top of his head um, as far as his body is concerned. And then there's little pieces down at the, the crushed daily planet that's down there. But um, yeah, really quite, uh, quite the statue. Pretty amazing. All right, so again, uh, this is an XM Studios piece. This is Colossus. Again, just a spectacular, magnificent piece. You, know, you see the, how detailed everything is, and it's really, really cool. And this, one of our favorite characters, is Deadpool. This is actually a custom, so it's, uh, it's not a main company. It was a, a private group that put that together. Um, it's kind of funny, Marvel has some uh, rules about things like they wouldn't normally have him pointing a gun straight ahead. <laughs> it's kind of funny how they have that. And then next to him is the uh, XM Studios cable. That's the original cable. And of course, I have him from the from the movie, so I, I put them together and made them uh, made them hanging out there. And so the next one, believe it or not, is not an XM Studios piece. This is a Prime One Studios. They do phenomenal work as well, and that is the Predator. Big game version. So he's not quite the the movie version. Uh, he's more of the of the comic book, and then uh, you'll see his alternate head down there at the bottom there. He, has, he actually has four different portraits uh, that, that you can put on him. So he has the one with the mask, which is right there, and it's pretty cool. And then growing up, oh man, Alien. Alien scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> I think it scared the bejesus out of everybody. Um, he's not going to be there actually in the, collectible, in the collection too much longer. I actually sold him to a buddy of mine, and I've got a, a new one coming in by XM Studios. And one of my favorite movies, uh, The Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, of course, The Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Can't wait for 3. It's going to be amazing. But Star-Lord, he's, uh, he's pretty cool. I like the colors on his suit, too. And again, not a movie version. It's more of a, their take on the cartoon version. And then Rocket and Groot. You see a little rocket sitting up on his shoulder up there. He's pretty cool. And then last but not least, you're getting a workout, right? Last but not least is the Batman. This is actually another one by Prime One Studios. It's from the Hush series, the Hush Batman. It is amazing, um, but I'm actually selling him as well. And the reason is, is because he is a one-third scale. And so I've kind of uh, decided to move away from one-third scale ones. Uh, but he is an amazing piece. I'll stay, I'll, I'll keep him as long as I can, but uh, yeah. And then uh, as you're coming back down, I guess you've got the alt modes of the, uh, of the Transformers there as well. So you've got Optimus Prime as the, as the truck. You have Starscream as the jet. You've got Bumblebee. And you've got Soundwave. Remember we were talking about those Walkmans? <laughs> there it is right there. And then uh, Megatron the gun, how he transformed into the gun. That's at the end there. There you go. Pretty amazing stuff. Love it, love the collection. So Joel, we're wrapping up the video here. Is there anything that you would do differently if you could go back before this all began? Um, what would you change in your home theater and, and kind of in your space? Oof, um, man, you know, that's a, it's a tough question, it's a great question. There's not much I would change, and not that I have the perfect system, because nobody does, and uh, I certainly don't. There are some that come so close, and you're like, oh, but even they criticize their own setup. You know, They're always talking about what they could do or different. I'd add this or whatever. Um, I think it's an, evolving, uh, it's an evolving thing. It's an evolving hobby for sure. Um, because of the limitations, there were so many thoughts that you and I discussed 
that I would maybe do this or maybe I didn't, but there was no way to do it here in the space. Um, so ultimately, if I was gonna read, if I was gonna start from scratch, I'd start somewhere else. <laughs> I'd start in a room that was dedicated for it, that I could have those thoughts and those plans out there. But I think that, um, uh, and not to pat myself on the back, because it's not that way, but I think what I've done is I've been able to take the space that I did have and able to make the compromises or adjustments or you know, putting a speaker in the wall instead of having it sticking out where somebody's gonna hit their head on it. Um, you know, do those things and basically just make the, the best I could with the space that I have. I think that's the most important thing in, in, in this situation for me. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, we've got many more coming your way in the Florida Home Theater Tour. So make sure you're subscribed. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.